Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean Hastings. And I am Jonathan Solzbach. And uh, a sad occasion brings us to you for this uh, special edition Cinema Filibuster Memorial. Uh, we are coming together to give thanks for and celebrate the life of Robin Williams. His passing has affected pretty much everyone I know Yeah, at work, of friends. Yeah. I didn't believe it. Uh, I found out on Facebook. I started seeing R.I.P. Robin Williams, and I thought, no, this has got to be some kind of a joke. Somebody's kidding. Robin Williams, he's he's barely in his 60s. He can't be dead. And, uh, of course, lo and behold, it did. And then, you know, uh, I, in fact, I even think to this, to now, and it's been, you know, a week or so, I don't really believe it. I, he's not, you know, and it, it, a lot of it has to do with I never met the man, so he is still in the same in my head, he is still in the same place that he was. I just don't. Well, I got you know, that much life and vigor. Just seems like oh, he's never going to get snuffed out. I mean. No, you know, you think, and but um, but good grief, you know, he. Uh, I, I try not to think about the work that was ahead of him because I'm sure there was. I mean, if you look at the the man's the body of work that the man had leading up to that, it's 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 a body of work that any actor in the world would be proud of. You know, uh, the Robert De Niro's of the world would uh, would love to have. Uh, a uh, an oeuvre, if you'll pardon me, stealing a pretentious phrase uh, of his quality, um, and of course we could we could talk on and on about it, and we just want to just briefly come on and say so. I've uh, decided we should just break it down into what are your or what are our each of our two most memorable roles, and it could okay. be movies, television, whatever. Uh, what something or stand up? What are what is something two things that he did that sticks with you that you remember? John. For Rowan Williams, the first one that comes to mind, and the one that, uh, well, <laughs> the, it's a film. Mm -hmm. Both of my favorite Robin Williams projects were films. Right. And it's been critically panned, but adored by millions, 1991's Hook by Steven Spielberg. Oh, absolutely. Hook's good. It's a good movie. Because it, it's, it's a testament to Williams' ability to play... A stuffy, middle-aged, uh, <laughs> right. unimaginative lawyer. Lump. <laughs> who, so far removed from who he used to be that once, even in, when he's in Neverland, he still can't figure out, like... What is this, what yeah. What is this world? And he tries to operate on his own... Um, on his own understanding of who, of who he became rather than who he used to be. And then at that pivotal point where, you know, he's trying to... They've told him who he is. He doesn't quite believe it, but he's going through <laughs> right. training... And there's a scene where this little boy puts his hands on uh, Peter's face. Peter, yeah. And he starts to, like, move it around, and he sees Peter through it. And Williams, in that moment, is just sort of... His face is... There's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. There's a transformation of not just being accepted for who he is, but understanding who he is. And then later, when he has the memories that allowed him to fly, mm -hmm. there's great joy. And then there's great sorrow and he transitions between those two beautifully well he uh, i personally i think robin williams overall was a brilliant man not just not just brilliant comedically or a brilliant actor i think he, his he had a first class mind you know uh, we're talking iq you know up 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 there with anyone who is solving the world's problems. I think his brain could be held favorably against any of the great thinkers of history, almost, just by how well it works and how fast it works. It's just that he chose comedy as the avenue. I mean, you could the way he did, you could stand up and improvise an entire ten-minute routine, and it wasn't just kind of funny. And oh well, he's trying to be funny. No, you're you're you're, you're gagging and laughing. Well, I guess I want to take it all the way back. Uh, my, <laughs> the very first, um, and of course I saw this live because I'm older than dirt, um, <laughs> is Mork from Mork. Mork and Mindy? Nobody, no. His, his Mork on Happy Days. On Happy Days? Yeah, Mork. This must have been after they jumped the shark. No, no, this was pre-shark pre jumping. Mork from Mork showed it, because it ended up being a, a dream that uh, Richie Cunningham was having. He was dreaming about aliens landing, and he had a dream about an alien coming down, and he ends up getting into a, I, the only thing I can think to call it is a magic duel with the Fonz. So he's, oh! Pointing the finger, making stuff happen. And of course, the Fonz is a a a, you know, and it's thumb versus finger, and it was it's my favorite episode of Happy Days, and he's this is the first time anybody had ever seen Robin Williams really, and he's just 
He's too big for this screen. The stuff he's doing, you know, even as a little kid, I was, you know, like eight, nine years old when I was watching it, but I'm just mesmerized. I go, this guy is weirdly attractive in terms of nothing else that's going on in the room you're in watching television is as important as watching this guy do stuff because it was fast and it wasn't just fast it was you know he hit a hundred beats in the time that it would take a regular comedian to hit 10 but every one of those beats was dead funny and back then of course he you know had the the energy that only massive amounts of cocaine can give you and then when they went on to Mork and Mindy that was one of that's one of my favorite shows of all time because you got to see Mork be be goofy but you got to see him have a heart. He fell in love. He, you know, eventually had a child in Jonathan Winters. and <laughs> Because you know, Orkins age backwards. But it was just such a, you know, you got to see Mor- Mork's heart. And don't say Mork's heart very fast because you can't say that. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. Um, and that, to me, was just, that was the birth of, I mean, and it was obvious. It's weird watching it, thinking, you knew this this career was going to be huge. Whatever he went on to do next, movies, whatever, uh, it was going to be not just great, but brilliant great. Well, his improvisations and his uh, voice impressions, and then his just nonstop make stuff up, paint little scenarios, and then deliver a punchline. Yeah. That sort of infectious creativity, ad-libbing, if you will. Mm-hmm. That's what I loved about uh, his portrayal as Genie in Oh, Aladdin. in Aladdin, absolutely. Because I don't think he had a script. I think they just said, you know, <laughs> convey this in the scene. Go nuts! <laughs> yeah, it's, and some of the things I read about it, he didn't really want to be a part of it initially mm-hmm. because of Disney's tendency to be a, a huge conglomerate of <laughs> pumping stuff out. Right. Know, and, uh, but somebody animated a little bit of his stand-up routine, showed it to him, and that convinced him that, oh, there's going to be some room here to, you know, have fun, well, go it, yeah. crazy, within the confines of the story, of course. In retrospect, it's obvious. You know, yes. you're, you're looking at it, you're going, what do you mean they had to think about this? Right. But, but, you, but, but it, to be fair to them, yeah, without ever having seen Aladdin, this piece of brilliance was, it, it, nobody, nobody would have thought of it. Mm-hmm. But in retrospect, it seems like it's been that way since the beginning of time. Well, of course you animate Robin, Robin yeah. Williams going nuts. And his, what I read is that what really uh, convinced him to do it is that he wanted to do something that a generation of kids and young people could appreciate and enjoy and have fun with, you know, something targeted at younger people. Mm-hmm. And and now those younger people are older people. Yeah, because that... <laughs> That was kind of my introduction to who he was, and I learned about things that he had done in the past and things doing that he was up to in the future. Mm-hmm. But I knew him as, oh, the guy with the funny voices and the crazy... Well, I knew him as Genie. I was like... Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I heard that voice, and it just, like, I was in, I was endeared to it. And there were lots of improvisations in Aladdin that I didn't know who he was mimicking. <laughs> like, Jack Nick's like, here's the deal, Smart. You gotta be a straight shooter. Straight. You know? And then... Here uh, I am! <laughs> yeah, you're right. He... Another one where... <laughs> I can't bring anyone back from the dead. It's not a pretty picture. And I don't like doing it! (laughs) That was Peter Lorre, in case you were interested, yeah. At the time, I didn't know. Didn't know who Peter Lorre, yeah. I was like, oh, it's just so fun. That guy from the 40s! So, that's why it was fun, it was zany, and there was still heart in that movie where you got this this, this genie who was kind of lonely and just wanted to be free, and I feel, and maybe this is drawing too close an analogy, but in many ways, I don't think Robin was free to really... Movies were a great outlet, stand-up was a great outlet, but somehow his comic energy and creativity never found the perfect outlet for who he was. Who he was, yeah. That's kind of... Yeah, anyway... What's uh, what's another one for you? Uh, so, well, the, the the one for me, and I like I say this is this is the movie that actually prompted me to call one of the most beautiful women that I went to high school with and ask her out on a date, <laughs> was the Dead Poets Society, mm. because that's you know he got to be Robin Williams. It, it's a serious, a more serious Robin Williams, you know, playing John Keating, but. You, you saw the life, you know, and especially juxtaposed to this school, this preparatory school that they're at, at Kelton, that is just oppressive, that, that destroys, tries to, to, to pound out everything in a human being that Robin Williams' character, Professor Keating, valued. 
And you see that juxtaposed between these other teachers who are teaching, you know, what is poetry? <laughs> poetry, you know, <laughs> poetry is not. And I and I totally it's one of if I had a T-shirt with it, I would love to have a T-shirt that said poetry is not about laying pipe. And that's what, you know, begone, J. Evans Pritchard, where they're tearing it out of the book. And that, that I think, John Keating, I think, I mean, of course, I didn't know Robin Williams at all, and I don't, I'm not trying to say, you know, trying to impose, like, what I, I think this is what he was like. But I think John Keating may have been one of the closest that we ever got to see to the real Robin Williams, you know, just as far as, it's not just about being funny, it's about the zest, it's about, you know, um, and uh, it also brought home the fact that he is not he is a brilliant actor because you know at the near the end of the movie which ironically where he's having to deal with the suicide of one of his students which that he, I'm, I I thought I was going to watch the dead poet society after cuz after after an actor becomes unavailable because that's the parlance in Hollywood actors don't die they're just not available after he became unavailable uh, I thought I'm, you know, I always like to watch a movie for an actor that's become unavailable, and I, I pulled out Dead Poet Society and I looked at it and I thought about some of the scenes, especially where he's sitting at the desk crying over this kid, and I mean Robin Williams cannot cry alone in my presence. Something about something about somebody that vivacious and funny crying, like uh, it, I don't know, it, it hits something, it pushes a button in my head, but then I got to thinking. This is him dealing with somebody who who committed suicide, and um, and again, I am, I am in no way coming down on Robin Williams. Uh, I I don't think suicide is cowardly. I don't think suicide. I, I think suicide is you are in a you are in a state of mind beyond being human to the point where it's not a rational thought. So if somebody does choose that, you know they I don't in any they should in no way I be blamed for what they did because that's not. A choice that a rational mind would make. Mm. So I don't. In, so and, and, and again. So but but I just found it interestingly ironic. In fact, that's one of the in one of the other movies. And I don't mean to step on you trying to come up with another movie. But what okay. dream, what dreams may come. Those are basically my two favorite movies. What dreams may come, and um, the Dead Poet Society. And in What Dreams May Come, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's about him dying and going to the next level of consciousness. It is heaven, um, and, and it's an interesting take on heaven and um, his wife in the in the in the movie uh, is so distraught she kills herself and she's Catholic so she believes that since she's killed herself she's gone to hell and where you go after you die in this movie is based strictly on what you think you go to where you believe you will go and so she sends herself to hell and it's about him going into the hell she has created to pull her out and I think these are two movies where he's had to deal with someone uh, who has committed suicide. And uh, one, of course, he's able to affect and do the change, but I just, you know, it's hard to watch that, knowing that he succumbed to it. <laughs> well, you told me <laughs> that uh, he inspired you to call some yeah. girl. I was thinking, oh, Goodwill Hunting, because Will finally right. gets up the, I don't know, the cojones or whatever you I want like, to call it, and decides to what, go after. I like Goodwill Hunting, especially the way they talk. <laughs> they talk funny in Goodwill Hunting. No, it was uh, in. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Dead Poet Society or have you I not? Haven't, but I'd like to. Well, there's this one of the one of the kids in his class uh, has a really bad crush on the football player's girlfriend, and he basically is persistent and gets her to go to the 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 goes to the theater production. And one of his other friends is doing a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, and uh, he gets her to go with him. And I thought. I'm going to call Leslie Baker. <laughs> and I that did. That is her real name. Well, stricken from the record? Uh, no, okay. she's not going to listen to this. And if she does, if you're listening to this, Leslie, hi. Uh, it's, it was, it was, I, I had a crush on Leslie Baker in high school. And I, I did. I called her up and asked her out. She was going to Europe. So, you know, I honestly, I can't blame her. If it's Venice or me, I'd take Venice rather than go out with me. <laughs> well, you've already got yourself. So. I do. So I would take myself to Venice. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, just in short. Um, we, uh, the world is a far sadder place, and we mm -hmm. have been horribly deprived of uh, of, of, of a, good, a, a lot of a future career that is now not going to happen. I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube, just watching different clips and interviews. Yeah. And 
it's just it's great i mean a lot of people get frustrated and upset when someone passes or becomes unavailable unavailable i do and understandably so i get frustrated by it because okay i don't deal with we need to i don't deal with death yeah we need to that's the thing yeah you you have no choice so i'm actually kind of a great ways to do that is laughter it is might seem inappropriate and you wouldn't want to laugh at somebody's funeral but for someone like Robin Williams, if, I think he would want people to laugh. If nobody laughs at my funeral, it's going to be a waste of time. <laughs> if you're there, make sure it happens. I don't care if you have to stick bottle rockets up my nose and launch them <laughs> out of the casket. Make people laugh. So I would encourage anybody who is a fan of Robin Williams, just do some uh, Googling or do some YouTubing. Absolutely. And and you're going to find yourself in stitches. You will. You will. You will, uh, you will. You will love it. And of course, our thoughts and our hearts and our prayers go out to his family, who I know are absolutely devastated at this. And um, we're thinking about you guys. And um, we uh, having, having lost good poor. You know, my entire immediate family. Uh, I I I know where you're at, and it's uh, it's it's bad, <laughs> but it will get better. And uh, like I say, our thoughts and prayers go out to you guys and um, all the best. And these are the times that remind us that life is worth celebrating. Absolutely it is. So with that, we'd like to say goodbye and thank you for listening. Absolutely. And John and I are going to go celebrate at the Olive Garden because <laughs> we're hungry. All right. Well, take care. Yep. Adios. Color us gone.